In these challenge questions, we're bringing together everything we've learned so far from this unit, including molarity, dilution, spectrophotometry, and mole to mass conversions. So we're gonna be using all of those things in the different questions in this challenge skill. We're gonna go through one of these example questions, but for these ones, you are gonna to have to do a little bit of problem solving to figure out what you, equation you need to use and where in order to get your final answer. So in this particular question, we have 42.3 grams of potassium sulfite, which is K2SO3. It's dissolved in water to form a solution with a total volume of 0 0.953 liters. Then the solution is diluted by adding water until the final molarity is 0 0.196 M. Okay, so our goals are to figure out the molar mass of potassium sulfite, how many moles of potassium sulfite we have in the solution, the initial molarity of the solution, and the final volume of the solution. So let's start out by trying to find the molar mass of potassium sulfite, K2SO3. So let's head to our periodic table. Our formula is K2SO3. So let's just look around our periodic table and find all of those elements. K is potassium. That's over here on the left. S is sulfur. Here's sulfur. And O is oxygen. Here's oxygen. So we found that we've got potassium, which has a molar mass of 39.10 grams per mole. We've got sulfur, which has a molar mass of 32.07 grams per mole. And we've got oxygen, which has a molar mass of 16.00 grams per mole. And in our compound, we've got two potassiums plus one sulfur plus three oxygens. So if we put in our molar masses for each of those, we've got two potassiums. Potassium is 39.10. Plus we've got one sulfur. Sulfur is 32.07. Plus we've got three sets of oxygen, which is 16.00. So if we multiply it out and add all of that up, that's gonna get us our molar mass for our overall compound, K2SO3, of 158.27 grams per mole. So there's our molar mass of K2SO3. So we can fill that in here. We had 158.27 grams per mole for K2SO3 molar mass. Okay, awesome. First step done. Next question, how many moles of K2SO3 are in the solution? Well, we're told how many grams we have in the solution and we've just figured out our molar mass so we can use that to do our conversion. So we're starting with 42.3 grams of K2SO3. And we're going to be using dimensional analysis to convert this. We have our molar mass, which we just found was 158 grams of K2SO3 per mole of K2SO3. That means 158 grams of K2SO3 is equal to 1 mole of K2SO3. So that's going to be our conversion factor there that we're going to use in our dimensional analysis table. Now we're starting in grams, we want to get rid of the grams and end up in moles. So we're going to put grams on the bottom, grams K2SO3, and we want to end up in moles on the top, moles K2SO3. And then in our fraction here, the top and the bottom need to be equal. So one mole of K2SO3 is equal to 158 grams of K2SO3 according to our molar mass, which is our conversion factor. Now we're ready to go ahead and multiply this out. So we're gonna multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and any units that are the same on the top and the bottom cancel. So grams K2SO3 cancels with grams K2SO3. 
and we are left with 42.3 multiplied by 1 mol K2SO3 divided by 158. If we put that in our calculator, that gets us out 0 0.267 moles of K2SO3. So let's fill that in and check if we got that right. 0.267 moles. Correct, awesome. So our first step was finding our molar mass using our periodic table. Our second step was converting the grams into moles for potassium sulfite using that molar mass. Okay, our next step is finding the initial molarity of our solution. So we now know how many moles of K2SO3 we have, and we know what the total volume was initially. It was 0 0.953. So we know that our N is 0 0.267 moles. We know that our V was 0 0.953 liters. And we're trying to find our M. That's our unknown variable. So let's head to our reference sheet and find our molarity equation. Here it is up here, that same one again. Molarity is number of moles divided by volume. So we've got M equals N over V. We're trying to find M. So this is already arranged correctly for us. So we can put our number straight in. N is 0 0.267 divided by V, which is 0 0.953. If we put those into our calculator, we're going to get out 0 0.280 M for our molarity. So let's fill that in and see if we got that correct. Awesome. Okay, so we found our initial molarity of our solution. Now we need to find the final volume of the solution. So let's go ahead and write down our knowns. So we know that our initial molarity, M1, we calculated was 0 0.28 M. And we know that our initial volume from the question was 0 0.953 liters. Then we're told the solution is diluted by adding water till the final molarity is 0 0.196 M. So we know our M2, our final molarity, is 0 0.196 M. And what we're trying to find is our final volume V2. That's our thing we're trying to find. So let's go ahead and find our dilution equation on our reference sheet. Here it is, dilution equation is M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. So we've got M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. We're trying to find V2. Right now V2 is multiplied by M2, so I'm gonna divide by M2 on both sides so that we can cancel that out on the right, leaving V2 on its own. So we end up with V2 is equal to M1 times V1 divided by M2. So we can go ahead and put in our numbers. Our initial molarity was 0.28 multiplied by our initial volume, which is 0 0.953, divided by our final molarity, which was 0 0.196. If we put that all into our calculator, we get out a final volume of 1.36 liters, which we can fill in to our answer box over here. 1.36 liters. Awesome, okay, so you can see there are a lot of steps here. First, we used our mole to mass conversion with our molar mass from our periodic table. Then we used the molarity equation to figure out our molarity. Next, we used the dilution equation to figure out the final volume. So it's pulling all those different parts together into one question. And all of the questions in this challenge skill are different. So you're gonna need to look at the individual question components and figure out which of those tools you can use to answer that question.